Hey there, Radioheads. Welcome to another episode of Radio KBE. This episode is uh, going to be on Thomas Bryant and one of the qualities that he brings to this team that we sorely need. Uh, but before I jump in, uh, I always want to say thanks to all the folks that subscribe. Uh, as we get closer to the regular season, I'm going to start focusing more on the small things that matter uh, and, and, you know, just skill stuff that, that we have with all these new faces that are, oh, and some returning faces that we have uh, on the team. And the idea is to sort of help folks better understand the small things that will help us win games, whether it's stuff from a possession to possession standpoint or stuff from, you know, like the grunt work stuff that sometimes people don't do, we don't really um, acknowledge or respect. Um, but really the goal of this is just to highlight the small things that, that we want to try and do uh, to try and, you know, win games in the regular season and then, you know, see if those things can scale out when it comes to uh, the playoffs. But that's a long way ways away. So as always, I want to say thanks to the folks that subscribe. And if you don't, you're always welcome to. Um, when we do live streams and stuff like that, you'll be able to... Uh, send in your chats and communicate and we can discuss stuff about Lakers basketball uh, as the season goes on. Um, but, you know, if nothing else, uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, we'll jump into it now. So first and foremost, um, there's probably going to be a positional battle uh, with between Thomas Bryan and Damian Jones. I don't know if we're going to add any more centers with this team. I know the Lakers have been interested in trying to add a guy like Miles Turner, but both players are uh, capable of doing things that we just didn't have out of this position um, last season. Last season, we had DeAndre Jordan and we had Dwight Howard, who were vets, expected to kind of do their jobs, which to some degree that they did. But the ability to do their jobs was one of the things that was an issue. Dwight was constantly plagued by a back issue and DeAndre is just old. That's really what it is. And so uh, playing in certain schemes and stuff like that, because even though in theory they would be successful in those themes, uh, in those schemes, in, in, in actuality, the amount of effort that was required uh, was, was really um, lacking. And, and that's what hurt the Lakers the most. Uh, but there is one part of last season that I think it was, it was a part of the Lakers basketball that had been missing, uh, which was sort of the opposite of what, what's happened pre prior. Uh, and, and it's, it's, transition play so you know just playing tra more transition basketball um, and any coach will tell you that in order for for a team to be successful or to even get out into transition you have to get stops uh, even if it's forcing a missed shot or if it's you know blocking a shot stealing the ball causing a turnover whatever it is getting stops is important and that has been an e a point of emphasis for coach ham but the thing that also helps good transition play happen is creating advantages and creating advantages is is like a it's a very i would say it's a broad term because there's so many different ways that you can create advantages and one of the things that we used to hear constantly constantly from um coach vogel was one of the advantages that the lakers could create for themselves in the, in the style of offense that he wanted to play was their verticality advantage right so when they would run pick and roll with javel or dwight or whoever they would be able to play above the rim, even with Anthony Davis when he played center. They'd be able to have this advantage uh, when it came to size above the rim. And because of that, they were able to, you know, finish finish plays, defend shots, that sort of thing. But that was something that we did maybe about two years ago successfully. Uh, and then the year after, we sort of deviated away from it a little bit um, when we had Marcus Gasol on the team um, and, and Montrez Harrell. And then we deviated even further from it when we tried to go back to Dwight and DeAndre Jordan because the ability when it comes to verticality uh, versus just the actual physical nature of verticality is two different things. But there's something, there's a part of this that that um, transition play that that's that we've been lacking, which I, which I'm actually looking really forward to. Uh, one of the things that I've mentioned is that the Lakers have gotten much more athletic. They've got much more speed. They've got much more, um, like the physical profile of the team is just more athletic. But part of athleticism is not just the physical nature of it. It's the, the willingness to, to constantly work uh, and, and utilize your athleticism to their ability. And, and the person that I wanted to focus on for this video was, was Thomas Bryant. 
And the reason why I wanted to focus on Thomas Bryant is because he has a quality, and, and Damian Jones has this quality too, but this one, this specific quality strikes out to me a lot. You know, a, lot of been, uh, a lot has been talked about uh, to some degree of, you know, can Thomas Bryant spread the floor uh, if he ends up being the starting five? He is actually a decent three-point shooter. Um, the last two seasons, he's been mired by ACL uh, injuries. And if you haven't read, uh, when he was with the Wizards, they did a nice write-up about just kind of how that ACL tear that he got um, two seasons ago was, you know, one of his first major injuries of his career. And because it was one of the first, remember, he's very young. Uh, because it was one of the first major injuries of his career, like, it takes a mental toll on you. It takes a physical toll on you, especially if you've been healthy your entire career. It's something that he was going through. Uh, and so, you know, I'm sure the Lakers are, are hoping that he has a nice bounce back season. He's, he's far enough away uh, from, from that actual surgery and rehab and stuff like that where hopefully he feels comfortable to, to getting back to his normal self. And he's definitely shown some glimpses uh, in, in smaller spots uh, when, when it's come to those sort of situations. Last, last season with the Wizards, uh, he was playing behind Daniel Gafford, and then they also had Montrezl Harrell for half the season. So it was going to be very hard, you know, the politics of basketball with how much those two players were getting paid, that, that Thomas was going to be able to to get minutes. But, you know, I'm sure the Lakers are banking on him to, to be sort of a floor-spacing five uh, to some degree um, and, and that ability. But Thomas does something else that I think is really important. And it is it's important from the standpoint of just kind of making everybody's life easier. And in basketball, not everything is just, um, not everything is laid out into one person drives, what's this person's catch and shoot three point percentage? Those are the guys that we have to get. There are small things that matter that um, players do. It's entrance, it's like within them. They don't have to be necessarily coached to do it, but small things that they do that allows them to be successful and allows their teams to be successful. Thomas Bryant does one of these things. So, you know, while everybody, you know, most of the fan base is sitting around and saying something to the degree of like, oh, we need we need more shooting. The, the roster definitely needs more shooting. But this idea that you have to have a center that has to be able to space the floor and that's like the only way that we're going to use him or, or that's his greatest benefit to the entire team, I think that's, that, that's a step too far. And I think... Uh, I think folks who use, not that, you know, it, it's, it's okay if you use it that way, but if you use analytics um, and letter grades and advanced analytics, whatever acronym, that uh, number that you prefer, if you use that to, to try and fill in the blank parts of an equation, that can be helpful to some degree, but teams, other teams use the same data. They use the same analytics. So they will eventually start scouting out stuff like, where does this player stand? Uh, how is he being used in this role? And there are sometimes, um, and, and when that stuff like that happens, your equation sort of falls apart. Uh, it becomes more predictable. If everybody, if the goal is just to get two guys and just to have only three and D guys around everybody else, well, eventually teams will scout that kind of stuff out and, and make your life much, much more miserable. And that's something that happened with the Lakers uh, a, a few seasons ago, that Eventually, defense is caught on to what it is that the Lakers were trying to do with having two seven-foot guys, uh, you know, Anthony Davis roaming the wings and, and a seven-footer protecting the rim. And what ended up happening is eventually teams figured out that if you sped the game up every time the Lakers missed their shots, those big guys wouldn't run back in time. And that was something that actually hurt the Lakers significantly. Their transition defense was incredibly poor. We didn't have enough speed. We didn't have enough... Um, athletic guys to get up and down the floor. Uh, you know, we were playing guys like Trevor Ariza, Carmelo Anthony. These are guys that are very much older, um, and, and, and they're not going to be running up and down the floor. And, you know, Trevor had an ankle procedure and stuff like that. So there were things that go beyond whatever an equation or a letter grade is telling you that that's going to, that teams look at and, and that they'll scout out and use against you. And I think adding Damian Jones and adding Thomas Bryant is going to help the Lakers not only on the equation and letter grade side of things, if that's how you look at basketball, but it also helps from tape. There are small things that Thomas Bryant just does. And so one of the things I wanted to highlight for this video is, is one of the things that he does, and that's just running hard. Thomas Bryant runs hard. And it's not that he just runs hard up and down blindly. He makes sure that he outruns his assignment. And so what I did is I, I pulled a couple of clips, four or five clips, that I wanted to sort of loop and show you guys uh, as we walk through.
to give you an idea of how he helps win small possessions for his team and those sort of things are that that element is an element that we were missing so many times on offense you would see a situation last season where you know whether it was russ or reeves or malik it was almost as if they were at a disadvantage every time they went out in offensive transition like the other team was always back so if lebron didn't run down the floor or anthony davis didn't run down the floor there was a disadvantage and a lot of those ugly possessions that we saw out of russ and and, and some of the other players on the team that was a result of just them coming down and their teammates not being down there with them. The shooting stuff aside, that's a, that's a different issue in itself. That's an individual problem, individual issue that Russ had. But that's just something that, that was always difficult. If you just sit and you think about all the times where um, Russ and LeBron were running in transition with each other and how successful LeBron looked, how clean his, his looks were um, in, in those transition opportunities, even if it wasn't off of a, uh, you know, a, a turnover, it was just, you know, a defensive rebound and pushing the floor, uh, pushing the pace on the floor, there was a difference. There, there was a different level of pressure that was being applied. And that's something that the Lakers lacked from their role players. Some guys did it. Austin Reeves, Malik Monk, um, maybe every now and then Taylor Norton Tucker. But it was something that they lacked. And that specific quality was something that they lacked out of their wings and their bigs. Our big men did not run down the floor um, hard in transition, whether off of, off of you know defensive rebounds. Usually they just give up the defensive rebound, give it up, and they would be the last guy down. So many times, if you were the, the opposing defensive uh, center, would get down the floor because they knew Russ or LeBron were, were eventually going to try to make their way to the rim early if they could, and they were coached into those situations. So we had no advantage. Um, when it came to numbers and stuff like that, there was no, there was nothing to capitalize on. We were just always at a numbers disadvantage in those sort of things. And Thomas Bryant helps us resolve that, and Damian Jones does too to some degree. So I wanted to share some of what that tape looks like. Um, so what I did is uh, I, I went back. Now obviously he hasn't played too much the past two years, but I tried to go back the past couple years um, and and grab just some plays that really exemplify what what I'm talking about. And so. This is, these are uh, just a few of the plays I found. I could pull 10, 12, 15 clips, but I think after you guys see, you know, these plays, it, it'll make sense to you um, as, as to what it is. So let's let's go ahead and um, pull up what, what it looks like here. And and I, what, I, what I want you guys to focus on uh, when we watch these clips is that watch where Thomas Bryant is on the play. And then watch what, just just keep track of him. And what I'll do is every time a, a clip starts, I'll sort of point out where he's at. But I just want you to watch and see how he runs down the floor. And there's so many small things. If you, if you talk to a skills trainer or something like that in the NBA, they would explain to you the, the small things that matter. So it's not just that he runs hard like every single play down in transition, but he also has good feet. Right? He has a good knack for understanding where is that open lane, where is the angle that I can provide to my teammate so that I can get an easy finish or create an early advantage. And that's something that, that Thomas did. Like Even if he wasn't the person who was, if, if they didn't find him immediately in transition at times, there were times where Thomas would um, create like a disadvantage for the other team. Because remember, if the big man in transition basketball, not you don't pick up your assignment. You pick up who's coming down the floor, right? So if you're in defensive transition and Thomas Bryant and you're, and you're a six foot guard or a six two guard or something like that, and you're getting back and you realize that your man hasn't crossed half court, but your center isn't back and Thomas Bryant's running down because he's running super hard, you have to pick him up. So now he's created, already he's created a mismatch, even if the ball doesn't get to them, where the opposing center has to figure out, oh crap, where's the, where's the guy that my guy was guarding? And they're trying to call out coverages and stuff like that. And that's the kind of stuff that, that matters. That's the kind of stuff that like small advantages that you create at, in a possession without having to call any plays at all. It just happens intrinsically. So so let's let's just take a look and see what some of this looks like. So you see Thomas Bryant here on this clip. You'll, you'll see him. He's right there with his back turn, number 13, with, with his back turn to the camera. So now watch what happens. The, this shot's going to be a miss. You see Russ battling with Lori Markkinen um, because... Uh, the Chicago spaced the floor out. So let's see what happens. So right here, right here, Laurie Markkinen is the guy who's playing center for them right now. T 
Thomas is already here. He realizes that he has a step on Lori. So see what, watch what he does. Already his head's up. So if you take a, if we go back just a little bit, as soon as he crosses half, half court, Thomas knows that he's already outrun Lori. So he's, his, his head is already up. Russ is looking at him in transition. Look at the, look at the numbers advantage. There's one, two, three, four. There are four wizards, or sorry, four bulls players that have already crossed half court. And there's only uh, one, two, and I think there's a guy in the, in the far right corner here. There's three guys. So the Wizards are actually at a disadvantage. But because Thomas Bryant is the one who has the advantage, he's one of the biggest guys on the floor right now, because he's outrunning his guy, that's why this, this play happens. And so Bryant runs his lanes, everybody's looking at Russ, and all of a sudden, Bryant gets a wide open dunk. Simple stuff like that. Small things like that make a massive difference. Now imagine if Thomas Bryant is running these lanes and Anthony Davis is there and LeBron's there and how much attention they command. These are the small sorts of plays that, that uh, efforts and stuff like that that end up helping the Lakers be successful. You win easy possessions this way. So let's go to the, we'll go to the very next one here. So again, if I, resume, if I start this possession back a little bit, you'll see the guy you see where Thomas Bryant is starting this play. So this is off of a miss. Daniel Gafford is directly behind Thomas Bryant. Bryant Thomas knows that, that Gafford's behind him. And he knows because he's playing with Russ. And this is a style of play that, that Russ likes to play. You have to get out there, right? So Thomas's one job is you've got to beat Gafford down the floor. And, and, and you know, Russ or whoever will find you. So let's see what happens. Again, the, my, my favorite part of this is you could tell Gafford knows Look at how hard Gafford is running here. Gafford knows that if Thomas beats him down the floor, he's going to get the ball, and Gafford's going to give up a layup or a dunk. Again, so, so even if we take this thing and we take it one step further, imagine how much pressure Thomas puts on the opposing center to have to be on top of his game. You've got to run with me. Even if you make the shot or you miss the shot, you have to run with me, or else I'm just going to get back the, the score that we just gave up. In this example... Um, the Bulls don't score, but those sort of small things put incredible pressure on a team that can gas. You know, Gafford may end up being gassed in the long run uh, in the fourth quarter, but it changes the complexion of how much pressure you're putting on the opposing defense. So you see Thomas Bryant run hard. Again, Thomas beats his man down the floor. So by the time, so Russ is waiting. So as we keep following. As soon as Gafford turns around, he re and this is a center's responsibility, Russ is going to go to the rim. But now Gafford has to decide because he's been chasing Thomas Bryant the entire day. He's like, oh, crap. So as soon as he turns around, he sees Russ going downhill. It's Gafford's responsibility to help his teammate out in case that player gets beat in transition. But Thomas is already down the floor. So as soon as Gafford's attention is, is taken away, it's an easy play for Thomas Bryant. And these are the short... Again, this is an example of... Even though he wasn't wide open, the fact that he ran down the play, he, he ran down the floor so hard, it ended up helping his teammates out. So let's go and see this next play here. So here's another example here of a play off of a defensive miss. So here we go. You see one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you see, um, yeah, you see four Brooklyn def uh, defenders down, and you see four. Wizards players haven't even crossed uh, the transition, uh, sorry, the half court line. So um, Bryant's, Bryant's, I think it was Andre Drummond, but Bryant's uh, assignments all the way back because he, he's not running down the floor very hard. So see what happens. So this is a nice example of, of how this sort of works. When you have, when you're at a man disadvantage or when the person that's supposed to be guarding you isn't guarding you in transition because you're outrunning them down the floor, it forces the opposing defense to have to pick you up. They have to decide. They have to gamble. Who is who is this ball going to go to? And all you have to do when you're a big man, uh, and, and this is what Thomas does in this example, is just get down the floor and go to the rim. Just run hard. Just just put some small effort in when it comes to that. And what ends up happening is the Nets have to gamble. So Seth Curry knows right now I have to choose between, uh, I think that's, that's uh, KCP. I have to choose between KCP, and I may be wrong if that's not KCP. I have to choose between KCP and Thomas Bryant. So he's just trying to play in no man's land and he's trying to defend his pass. So Thomas, all he does is run to the rim, gets down, 
Easy dunk. Yeah, and it's Andre Drummond that that's not getting down the floor. So again, small advantages that get created that, that lead to easy buckets. That stuff also affects player morale too, right? So like now maybe Seth Curry's looking at Andre Drummond yelling at him like, hey, what are you doing? Like you have to get down the floor or else this guy's just going to keep getting dunks over and over again. So let's take a look and see what happens in this place. So this one's a little bit, I like this one a little, uh, I like that how relevant this one is because Thomas is underneath the rim uh, when this play starts. So he's underneath the rim. You can see him and Rob Williams are right next to each other, right? So Thomas is here trying to help out on defense, uh, and this ball gets kicked out to the to the perimeter. And this ball is going to end up getting stolen. So now it's basically a foot race, Thomas Bryant and, and Robert Williams. Now watch again. See how hard. Soon as he crosses half court, soon as Thomas crosses half court, he's fully aware of where the lane is. He already knows exactly where he needs to go and where he needs to be. All Thomas is doing is, is he's outrunning his man down the, down the floor. These are small efforts that make a massive difference. So now something that looks something that started off looking like it may just be like a four on four. Take a look here. One, two, three, four guys, right? There's four Celtics that are there. Thomas is already in front of Robert Williams and he's got somebody right on his hip that he has to outrun. So this should conceivably, if, if Thomas did, doesn't run hard, this should conceivably be a three on three. Or just based on the size of the players that are on the floor, it's a, and it'll be like a three on four. But because Thomas runs hard, he outruns two Celtics down the floor. It turns into a four on two. So what ends up happening? Thomas gets a wide open layup. And these are the small efforts, right? And remember, he's like he's a big guy, right? He's 6'11". So it's harder to block a guy like him in transition when he's coming down the floor. So here's another example here. So... If we roll, if we roll this back, this is something coming off of a. This is Thomas's. This is Thomas's defensive assignment right here, right? This is Thomas's defensive assignment uh, in Vucevic. Russ comes over to help on the weak side to help challenge this shot. Now look at where this play starts. Vuce is probably what half a step, maybe a step behind him. He's just missed the layup. Thomas has helped defend it successfully, and now Bradley Beal has has got this rebound. So now again, Thomas's job is one and one thing only. This is something that he does himself. Run down the floor hard. Look at how hard he's running. Vooch has no chance of catching up to him now at this point. Four guys that are behind, four guys that are behind the half court line. So that means that everybody basically except Vooch is, is, is in front of Thomas here. So this should be conceivably be uh, like a, a man disadvantage situation. But because he's running hard, now look, this is the other part. Markel Fultz's, Markel Fultz's responsibility, uh, Bradley Beal advances the ball to Russ, and Markel Fultz's assignment is Bradley Beal in transition. So he's picking him up. So now Thomas continues to run. He runs right by Markel Fultz. After he runs by Markel Fultz, Aaron Gordon's also in a situation where he's supposed to, um, he, he has to come and help. But Aaron wasn't in position to help because Aaron had his own man in transition defense that he was assigned to. And so what ends up happening is Thomas Bryant ends up getting a layup. So these sort of small things, right? Like these sort of small things that, that um, I'm, I'm trying to describe and just sort of illustrate to you, to everybody, like these sort of small things are things that matter a lot. And Thomas does these sort of small things and, and it allows their, it allows, um, it allows his teammates to be successful. So if the Lakers have an emphasis about getting stops and then getting out in transition, that this is something that's going to matter. Like these sort of small efforts are something that's going to matter. And in the half court, him being able to knock, catch and shoot threes and stuff like that, that stuff will matter too. But when we take the tape and we look at all the small efforts that are required, I'll eventually do another uh, video in regards to just kind of how he, how his shooting sort of um, helps space the floor and, and then how the Wizards uh, would, would utilize his uh, spacing ability and stuff like that because of his shooting ability. like. These sort of small efforts matter. And while everybody sits around sitting to themselves and asking themselves, oh, wow, we really need 40% three-point shooters, basketball is just much more than that when it comes to when it comes to big men. And it's not just the ability to knock down the occasional three. Look, we only need him to be league average. We just need him to make one of every three attempts that he, he takes because that's basically league average. But what we really need out of him is these sort of small efforts. Get up and down the floor off of a defensive rebound or, or, or a turnover 
and just create small advantages because you can turn a, a four on three or sorry, you can turn like a, a, a three on four into a four on three just by how you run the floor and stuff like that. And so I think it's an underrated part of his game. Um, I hope that he's he reaches, you know, like full health and stuff like that, because I think if he does, he's going to provide um, a lot of this kind of stuff to the team. And I think it'll allow the, it'll allow the Lakers to get very easy points. And, and we just didn't have enough of those easy points because it was so predictable what we were trying to do on offense. And, and frankly, we were always we were at, at a disadvantage when it came to, to numbers in transition. And getting this specifically out of our center position and, and out of our big man, it's a big deal. Because we know guards will get up and down the floor and we know smaller wings will get up and down the floor because they want to run their lanes and get to their, their spots so they can take their open three. But when a big man does it, when a big man runs hard and runs well in transition, that unlocks so much stuff for your team um, in different ways. You know, one of the things that I didn't pull, um, which I'll eventually pull in, uh, in, in the next video, is these, these examples I showed you were him running hard and finishing at the rim. But there are possessions where the opposing center is trying to outrun him. And, and they're almost to the, to the degree where they're just running straight to the rim without even paying attention to where Thomas actually is. And Thomas actually has the, um, he has the awareness to slow down and stop at the top of the three-point line. And he just starts taking wide open threes and, and he starts making them. And his shot profile leans more towards above the break three-point shots. And that's a very good example of how, how that works. If he's running hard to the rim, he's gonna get a dunk if he outruns his guy to the rim or, or a layup. But if his guy's trying super hard to try and get back because they don't want LeBron or Anthony Davis or Lonnie Walker or whoever it is getting to the rim, uh, and then they're trying to get back in transition quickly, well, Thomas can calmly walk in and, and step right into those pull-up threes uh, or those catch-and-shoot threes in transition too as well. So it's a small thing. Uh, it, it's, it's a small thing on observation, but it's a huge thing in terms of basketball. And, and I think that's something that um, Laker fans are going to come to appreciate, you know, assuming he stays healthy and, and he gets his minutes and whatnot. And, but it is something that I'm very much looking forward to seeing him um, uh, and, and seeing him be successful. And uh, it's something that I'll definitely be keeping track of. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, as always, uh, if you haven't had a chance to, if you can like and subscribe, it does help uh, the channel out. But, you know, uh, as always, whether it's a live streamer here, I appreciate everybody joining and I appreciate you guys sharing the videos and liking and retweeting them. Um, and, you know, if nothing else, I'll see you guys uh, in the next video. And I appreciate it as always. Have a nice day.